Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. You know how much I love Fireside, that smokiness of the lap song. So, so, so good. Usually I'm drinking Misty Morning or some Focus. Not today. I have actually a fire going in the background. Why? It's a little bit cold. It's a little bit chilly here in South Florida. I don't want to tell you what the temperature is because then you'll hate on me. Anyways, it's still cold for us that have extremely thin blood. Anyways, today is going to be a Sony Canon type of discussion day. Um, before I get into it, I want to say that if you haven't went over to jcristina.com, go check it out. I have a lot of photography tools that I've invented over the last 10 plus years. Go check it out. Right now, we're using promo code YT30 because of the holidays. You get 30% off everything that I've ever created. Go check it out. Also, if you haven't downloaded my ebook, go check it out over at jcristina.com forward slash ebook. 10 tips at making tack sharp images. 10 tips, guys. Something for amateurs, pro-ams, as well as professionals. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash ebook. So let's get right into the topic. Now, Sony has been making a ton of money selling cameras, right? But they've been making exponentially more selling image sensors. And uh, while they've been doing it for many, many years, Canon's been sitting on the sideline looking at them like, wow. They're making a lot of money at this. We want in on the action. Well, that's what is happening as of now. A couple of videos ago, someone said, well, Sony is making sensors and they're making a lot of money at it. And Sony sensors are better than Canon and yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes sometimes. And while that might be the case, Canon now is going to be offering sensors, which is really smart. Now, we know that camera phones smartphones is where a lot of those Sony sensors are going, right? That's where they're making the majority of their money. Why? Because it's lucrative because not many people are buying cameras anymore. That's just simply it, right? So there's a lot of camera phones, a lot of smartphones out there that need sensors. So as of right now, they are number one. So a couple of weeks ago, Canon confirmed that they were absolutely 100% going to start selling their CMOS sensors to third-party companies to put into their applications. The exact same thing that Sony is doing, or that has been doing for many, many years now. Now, according to Canon, they state, Canon has been manufacturing CMOS sensors since 2000 for exclusive use in Canon products. Building on that expertise and success, Canon is now committed to starting external sales to collaborate with various industries. Canon CMOS sensors feature unique designs to meet the needs of demanding vision applications. Demanding vision applications. You get that? that nomenclature in there, you know? So chances are right out the get-go, it's not going to be image sensors sold to like Fuji or something. It's probably going to be specific, but I'll get into that in just a second. Now, if we head over to Canon's website, we can see that they've made 2.1 megapixel sensors, 150 megapixel sensor, even a mega 250 megapixel sensor at variable ratios, at variable sizes, okay? There's one, I believe, that was an APS-C-H. So very interesting. Well, another one that I saw that was even more interesting was that five megapixel sensor that they talked about, I don't know, a year ago or something, which allows for a global shutter. Now, if you don't know what a global shutter is, well, basically, in comparison to how sensors are read right now, which is across the sensor, right, line by line, line by line, or the other way, line by line, a global sensor reads out the entire sensor in one go. So instead of scanning over that sensor to read it, producing jello effect, some stuff that you really don't want. It reads it like this at X number of frames per second. The entire sensor in totality, 
every single pixel. So a five megapixel sensor is still a lot of pixels to be able to read like this quick, right? So that is what they're doing. So we can see the use case for this. Now on a side note, I do believe that we're gonna see Canon put a global shutter into a camera. Now, which camera that is, I personally believe it's going to be a 1D. Why is that? Well, 1Ds are professional grade cameras that do not require a lot of megapixels. It's all about speed and durability. Now, the 1Ds are very expensive. Matter of fact, they don't always have a CMOS sensor in it. Most people don't know this, but the very first 1D didn't have a CMOS sensor, it had a CCD sensor. And this is it. This is the original 1D, all right? This has a CCD in it and not a CMOS sensor. To switch this out to a global shutter sensor, it's not really far-fetched in my personal opinion. Now this camera does only have 4. Point, I think 3 megapixels, 4.3 megapixels, all right? Paid about $7,000, $8,000 for this at the time, all right? This gives you an idea, okay? Professional grade camera. So I do think that that could be the case. Now, why do I think that's the case? Well, because I don't think that Canon really needs that many megapixels in a 1D type series body. And if they can get away with a CCD that was 4.3 megapixels at the time and have people like me, don't say anything, buy it for seven, $8,000, they should be able to stick a global shutter that is five megapixels or 10 megapixels. Maybe they'll get up to 12 megapixels for that camera, okay? But they don't need 20. That's for sure. So anyways, moving on, Sony has been making absolutely tons of money creating sensors, selling sensors, and they've sold a lot of these sensors to companies like Fujifilm, to Nikon, etc. okay? Lots of money. Obviously, like I said, they make more money selling those sensors for smartphones, but they still sell them to those third parties like Nikon and Fujifilm, etc. Now, in a recent industry article by Nikkei, they said perhaps we'll see one day where Canon CMOS sensors will end up in other companies' digital cameras. Now, I really don't think that that's the case. I think we're going to see Canon really laser focused on the smartphone industry. That would be number one. But secondary to that, I think a lot of these sensors, just by looking at how they're designed, will go into, for example, a security, right? Security cameras or assembly line, productivity type of thing, maybe medical or even military, or possibly smart cars, that type of thing. I think that's what they're going to focus on and not so much the camera industry. Um, and the reason being is, is the numbers are not there. I mean, all of the money that Sony has been making on sensor sales basically stagnated when it came to selling to the camera market, the camera industry. Just sensor sales was down to nil. But their sensor sales are still going up, ramping up exponentially. Why? Selling for smartphones. So I think that the writing is on the wall. We're going to see Canon sensors in smartphones down the road, that's number one, and a lot of industrial stuff. I just don't think that they're going to be in camera manufacturers like I said, a maybe a Panasonic or a Fujifilm or even Nikon, who are currently using a lot of Sony sensors. I don't think that that is going to change anytime soon. So to come full circle, I do think that Canon is really going to put pressure on Sony and maybe move into that second spot, pushing Samsung out of that 20 percentile, where we see Sony sitting at about 40% of all smartphone, in smartphone sensor sales. So I think that they're going to be focused, laser focused on that, just like what Canon did when it came to the mirrorless market, right? They came into it, just a little bit here and there with the M series and just uh, whatever. And then all of a sudden they said, you know what? We cannot waste any time. Sony is eating our lunch. We need to do something about it. And then all of a sudden Canon just ramped up their production of mirrorless cameras and even more so those lenses, those RF lenses. We know that 
everyone follows the lens. And if there's not a lens to a specific camera system, the photographers won't go down that road. For example, if a photographer needs something that's extremely long, telephoto, as of right now, they're probably going to go to Canon. Why? Because they're producing 600, 800, 1200 millimeter lenses. Okay. Whereas Sony doesn't have those as of yet. So there's always a use case. A lot of people say, what's better? Which one's better? Well, better based on what? Or better based on who? Or better based on what use case? That should be the question, not what camera is better. Because there is fantastic cameras that are completely trash for maybe your use case. Whereas for mine, it is like the best thing since sliced bread. So it is very important to look at all of these factors when you're deciding on what camera to buy and what lenses to get into, what ecosphere you want to put your money into, all right? Because once you buy some really expensive lenses, you know or I hope you know, you're married, all right? You sign the papers, right? There's no nuptial, that's it. You're in, you're married to that brand. And that's what happens a lot of times. People get married to a brand, they turn into fanboys, and now all of a sudden they can't see the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest. Why? Because they just now have to justify their purchase, which I always think is sad. I've never been like that. It's just weird. <laughs> Anyways, so I want to know what your thoughts are. What do you think Canon's going to do with this? Do you think that they are going to take that 2.1 megapixel, 150 megapixel, 250 megapixel, and that little 5 megapixel global shutter sensor and just sell the hell of it into the industry and also really concentrate on the smartphones? I want to know what you think. All right. I want to know what you think. Also, do you think Canon will be able to catch up to Sony when it comes to sensor sales. Like I said, right now, they are just crushing it with 40% of the global market when it comes to sensor sales. Personally, I never thought that Canon would even sell sensors. A lot of people don't even think Canon's sensors are even any good. And they probably are asking the question, well, who really cares because Sony has better sensors than Canon? I don't know. I really don't know, but we will see what ends up happening. Once again, I want to know your thoughts. So before I get going, I want to say that if you like this content even a little bit, please throw it a big thumbs up. That would be absolutely stellar. That would allow the YouTube gods to look kindly on this video and the channel and hopefully recommend it to other fellow photographers, videographers, and tech heads, basically who we get here. Also, don't forget, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. There's a lot of you guys that are like looky lose. You watch all my stuff and you comment, but then I find out you're not subscribed. Why? Just subscribe. Also, click this little bell icon right over here. So if you are subscribed, then that is clicked. Whenever I go live or if I come out with a new video, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you haven't went over to community.jchristina.com, our creative Discord server, go over there. It's free, awesome, great people over there. Once again, community.jchristina.com. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. That would be absolutely awesome and appreciated. And finally, I wanna thank all of the people right around here that have joined the channel. If you would like to join the channel and contribute, please, at the bottom of every video, you'll see a little button that says join, click it, and it'll give you the ability to give a dollar or $2 a month or whatever to help me out, help the channel out grow, and help me continue to make a lot of videos, as much as I can. We're up to like 450 videos. So anyways, guys, if you're still here, if you're still here, thank you for being here. I want to tell you one thing. In the last video, I was talking about Google, right? And how Google went down and some other things. But the idea was that Google went down and I was saying, what happens to all of the data? All right. When Google comes up and let's say there is missing data, I was telling you how my kid's school was down. Okay, because they couldn't do meets and there's no virtual school. And you basically just shut down the schools because Google is down. Big problem. Well, guys, it happened to me. It happened to me. I have 
tens of thousands of people that I communicate with regularly through email, and maybe you're one of them, all right? Well, I went into my software that I use for this communication, and the company uses, I'm not going to say which company this is, unless they don't fix this, but anyways, this company that I use for doing my emails, I found that when I looked at the number of people that were signed up or registered, it dropped 1,200 and some people. Like literally if 1,200 and like 50 people unsubscribed in a day. I'm like, what? That's not possible. I mean, we would get like one or two unsubscribes and maybe about 30, 40, 50 subscribes. So that, that just doesn't work. We've been doing this for 10 years, right? Do you know? I contacted them. You know what they said? It has to do with the Google outage. We lost some stuff. Are you me? Really? So anyways, before I get into a long tangent, which I will turn into another video, if for some reason they don't fix this, um, just understand that it happens. Google goes down and you lose data. It's definitely possible. And I lost 1,250 of you that I communicate with you on a regular basis on my list, right? It's kind of sad. So we'll see if they're able to fix it. Um, if they are, I'm gonna let you know. And if they don't, I'm gonna let you know also. So if you're one of those people that for some reason are no longer getting my emails after this message to you, please go over to jchristina.com. You can go and just sign up there and get back onto the mailing list and you will be back with me and I'll be able to send you over notifications of videos and everything else, all right? So please do that. You can also download that ebook, that free ebook, and at that time you'll also be signed up, either which way, jchristina.com forward slash ebook, however it is. But anyways, I wanted to make you aware of it so that if this ever happens to you, you know what is going on. You lose data, you cannot leave this data in the cloud. You need to make it local. You have to keep it local. I'm gonna be doing a video based on this very, very soon, so watch for that. Anyways, guys, thanks for being here all the way to the end. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.